I'm in a great mood tonight, I'll tell you why. My mother-in-law's been visiting me for four weeks, and she left today. I took her to the airport this morning, and I think her plane leaves tomorrow. See, comedy everywhere, sir. 6,000 doctors got together, 6,000 doctors, and did a study for the New England Medical Journal. And if I know something we already know, <laughs> that laughter is good for the soul, and laughter is a great healing tool. And the worst laughter in the world, sir, the worst laughter in the world is the laughter you keep inside and don't let out. Did you hear me, sir? <laughs> I'm trying to help you. <laughs> if you keep it inside, the doctor said it's dangerous. You know why it's dangerous? Because it turns into gas. <laughs> I didn't write that. 6,000 doctors told me that. <laughs> but I wrote the next line. You see the people behind you? They'd appreciate it if you laugh tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 55, and I'm telling you folks right now, I don't know about the rest of you, but this body is starting to break down, I'll tell you. It's, I don't have the energy I had 25 years ago, I'll tell you. If it wasn't for stress, I'd have no energy at all, I'll tell you. <laughs> Of course, my wife doesn't get stressed, she's just a carrier. <laughs> but let's, let's face the cold hard facts, guys. Come on, all you guys out there, let's get with me on this. Let's face the cold hard facts, guys. Am I right? A man marries, then he mellows, then he ripens, and then he rots. <laughs> it's the truth, and you know it. The left knee goes, then the right knee, then the weenie. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm feeling old. Even when I'm naked, I feel like slipping into something a little more comfortable. <laughs> I'm serious. Happy hour for me now is taking a nap. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm telling you. My wife said the other night, you want to go upstairs and fool around? I said, honey, pick one, because I can't do both. <laughs> It's not funny. <laughs> I'm serious. At my age, I'll tell you, an all-nighter for me now is not having to get up to pee all night long. <laughs> That's an all-nighter for me, I'll tell you. Uh, it's not funny, folks, okay? I don't know what the It's not funny. I was walking in Las Vegas. A lady of the evening walked up to me, and she says, George, come here. Come here, George. I'll do anything you want for $250. And all I could think of was, can you paint my house? <laughs> oh, no. I'm telling you. I went to a gay 90s bar and all the, all the guys were gay and all the women were 90. <laughs> But getting old is not bad. You just have to learn to adjust to it. You have to learn to adjust to it. That's what you have to do. You have to think it ahead. Just learn to adjust to it. I'm telling you. Even when I bend over now to tie my shoelaces, I say to myself, George, while you're down here, is there anything else you can do? Bedtime is when you ladies really shine. <laughs> Bedtime. When you put on that outfit you bought at Frederick's of Walmart. <laughs> oh yeah, that sexy printed coat <laughs> with the pocket torn down the side. <laughs> and the little belt loop hanging down, you know. Got those little pink shoes with little fuzzy balls. And you put on all that cream, cream on your arms and your legs and your hair. We give you a hug and you go flying into the air. <laughs> but what about us, girls? <laughs> what about us? Do we really turn you on or what, huh? 
when we walk into that bedroom, little belly hanging out. Yeah, little boxer shorts all the way down here below the knee. Oh yeah, the skinny little stark feet with the rolled up socks we use for house shoes. Oh, how do you control yourself? How do you control yourself? And the big red mark across her belly from the elastic band. I don't know how you control yourselves, girls, I'll tell you. And that T-shirt with all the little holes in it. Little bullet holes all over our little T-shirts. You're not getting this shirt. You're not polishing furniture with this shirt. Use your bloomers. Yeah. All my shirts smell like pledge, I'll tell you. But I haven't had dust on my chest in 20 years, you know? I need, I need some serious help, I'll tell you. Any Irish people out there? Yeah. Ah, thank you. As long as you got a few alcoholics, we're gonna have a party, I'll tell you. When I was a child growing up in Ireland, my father used to always say, booze is good for you. He'd always say that, booze is good for you. Booze can remove warts and pimples from your face. Oh yeah, not from you, but people you're looking at. <laughs> I'm clear, my father had his toes amputated, so he stand closer to the bar. <laughs> I'm serious. My father would, my father would, my father would, he would rather hear you say you got six months to live than he ran out of beer. <laughs> That's an Irishman for you. My father was like that. He always told me his sons, he said, he said, do you ever notice that Indians have the most beautiful names? They give their children the most beautiful names, the most romantic names. They do. And they always say that they get the name from the night the child was conceived. The father gave that name, the way he felt the night that child was conceived. And they have beautiful names like Flaming Passion, Blazing Glory, or something like that. He said, if we were Indian, you'd end up being drunken stupor. <laughs> ah, I know, I'm crazy, I know. But we Irish are, we're fun. Irish humor is so different than any other humor. Because you never know if we're making fun of ourselves or making fun of you. <laughs> you never know. Because we do a lot of stupid things. Trust me, and we do a lot. We're not ashamed to say it. We do stupid things, the Irish. We do. But you know what I'm saying? We do stupid things. We do. But we don't go, we don't hide it. We don't sweep it under the carpet. You know what we do? We're so crazy. We go out drinking and tell everybody about it. <laughs> I'll give you some great examples. I'm sitting in a stool in a bar one night and down, minding my own business. An Irishman walked up to me, a total stranger with an Irishman, sitting on a stool, minding my own business. An Irishman walked up to me, a total stranger, looked me straight in the eye with no expression whatsoever, like a deadpan face. And that man said to me the dumbest thing that's ever been said to me on my life on this planet. That man looked me straight in the eye and said to me, are you reading that paper you're sitting on? <laughs> Are you reading that paper you're sitting on? <laughs> I couldn't believe it, I'll tell you, but the Irish in me took over. I couldn't let it go. You know what I did? I got up, I turned the page, and I sat down again. <laughs> Little Irish woman walked into a pub one day. She walks up to the counter. She says, "Sir, the bartender, come here. I want a double shot of whiskey and two drops of water." <laughs> and the guy said, "That's the most unusual drink I've ever had all the time. I've been working this bar. A very unusual order." She says, "Sonny, at my age, you can hold your liquor, but you can't hold your water." <laughs> Two little Irish guys walk in a bar one night. They're giving the high five. They're all excited. They're jumping around. And the bartender says, calm down. This is a restaurant. What are you so happy about? And one little Irish guy goes, well, well, sir, sir, sir. We, we just put a jigsaw puzzle together. Did you hear me? We put a jigsaw puzzle together. And we finished it in four months. 
And the bartender says, what's so great about that? Little Irish guy goes, look, the box said two to five years. <laughs> If you like that one, you're gonna love this one. <laughs> Little Irish guy and an American guy were trying out for a job one day, and they're both qualified for the job. And the foreman says, you know what I'll do? He says, I'll give you a test. You're both qualified, so I gotta figure out what I'll do. I'll give you a test. I'll give you 10 questions each, run off, write down the answers, come back. That sounds good. Let's see who gets the most right and get the job. Well, they both came back, folks, and the only problem was they both had nine right and one wrong. <laughs> And the foreman says, that's it, that's it. I'm giving the job to the American guy. That's what I want to do. And of course, the Irishman got all bent out of shape. He said, how can you do that? That's not fair. I had nine right and one wrong. He had nine right and one wrong. So why would you give the job to the American guy? And the foreman says, because the way he answered the fifth question. He wrote down, I don't know. And you wrote down, neither do I. <laughs> And I'm celebrating this year again. I married 20 years to a lovely German girl. 20 years we've married. Any Germans here? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. <clears throat> You're cold, frigid people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm married to one of you for 20 years. I know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you. I'll tell you my love life is so bad, I put a strobe light in the bedroom. Now we fool around, it looks like she's moving. <laughs> it's serious. And I love my wife. You Germans out there, I'm only teasing you. I love my wife with all my heart. She gave me two beautiful children, half Irish and half German. Oh yeah, little alcoholics going around the house giving orders to everybody. <laughs> And if you think that's a weird combination, my sister-in-law is half Jewish and half American Indian. Oh yeah, her name is Bargain Hunter. <laughs> I'll leave you a little story here because you've been a wonderful audience. And this is for all you seniors out there. You'll enjoy this because you're going to have the... You have the last laugh with this one. There's a great little story about a couple that lived up in Chicago and they're coming down to Florida for the winter. They're snowbirds, right? And they come down for the winter and they stop halfway down to break up the journey. And the little couple checked into a hotel for the night and they had a nice time, got up in the morning, they went, the little man went to pay his bill like most men would do in the morning. He went to pay his bill, but he got a bill for one night in this hotel in the middle of nowhere. He got a bill for $475. Can you imagine that? For one night. Well, of course, he freaked out. He screamed at the manager. How can you charge $475 for one night in a hotel in the middle of nowhere? I'm a senior, for God's sake. How can you do that? And the manager says, calm down, sir. You don't understand. You don't understand. This isn't just any hotel. This is a very luxurious hotel. It's a five-star hotel. And there's one flat rate for everybody. But that flat rate entitles you to anything you want. All the extras you want, it's all on the house, like a package deal. Everything. They turn to the old man and he says, sir, did you have steak and lobster last night for dinner? And the old man goes, well, no, I didn't. Well, you could have. <laughs> it was there for the asking. Did you have breakfast in bed and massage in your room? And the old man goes, well, no, I didn't. Well, you could have. It was there for the asking. And the old man couldn't take it anymore. He was a senior citizen. He had been there. He had done that. And he was going to have the last laugh. You know what he did? He pulled out his checkbook and he wrote a check. And he threw it at the manager. And the manager looked at the check and he goes, wait a minute, this check's for $100. And the old man goes, that's right, sir, it's $100. You know why it's $100? Because I'm charging you, I'm charging you, the manager, $375 for trying to fool around with my wife last night. <laughs> and the manager goes, what are you talking about? I never tried to fool around with your wife. Well, you could have. She was there for the <laughs>